You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get on. Mandate, get it on. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea over there. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, fresh off your Detroit trip. Yes. With uh, Drag Race and Goldberg, and amongst others, right? Yeah, yeah. There was a whole group. Um, so I'm curious about that. I'm curious uh-huh. about the... Uh, there were some travel woes. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> There always is. You know, I... <laughs> my feeling, uh, my feeling with travel is, I, I'm I'm trying to be um, philosophical about it, which is to say, it's it's a pretty unique time we're living in, where you get to just go from one side of the country to the other side of the country in three hours or five hours or whatever it is, and then if the plane's twenty minutes late, then you're pissed off. I never want to be one of those people because. It's a pretty intricate dance. Yeah. And so I never want to be one of these people that is like, I don't know, there was some chick and she was like a singer or rapper or something like that. And her sister like came on the plane and she was like, hey, my sister's allergic to peanuts. We need to remove all the peanuts from these planes. And they're (laughs) like, we won't do that. Oh, how do you say her name? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. That's not a real name. And I don't know who she is. I just remember the story. And now she's like writing tweets like, fuck this airline and that. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know where you got the bar set for you and the airlines. Yeah. But just showing up with your sister who's allergic to peanuts and then telling him to stop the plane and pull all the peanuts off and stuff. Maybe that's a little too big ass. Yeah. On the other hand, when my wife is taking the last Southwest flight out of vegas and two drunk guys are arguing back and forth and she's sitting in between them when she gets thrown off the plane and told to go find a hotel room then maybe that is the airlines kind of not doing it yeah right you know what i I mean i i I i'm with you on this like i i don't cause a ruckus and i every time like the last three times i've flown i'm three for three three fails by the way the last three times i've flown all had issues but every time two of the three they pulled me apart they're like we gotta check you again you gotta do you're randomly selected i'm fine with that do that i get it that's part of the pro that's part of the protocol i'm all fine just do whatever you gotta do and i don't make a thing but you know, I flew that flight, and then they switched the planes, and we had the upgraded seats, and they're like, well, you're in row E, and there's no moving out of row E, but the smaller plane in row E is a shitty row now. So, right. Yeah, so, so that you're story. Right. And then uh, uh, the UK trip to Goodwood on the way back, I was like 50 minutes early for my connecting flight back to the U.S., and they're like, oh, we closed that flight. Right. Like, it's 50 minutes. So I had to get a hotel room at my cost because right. they wouldn't pay for it. Right. So... So what happened, uh, first, I should uh, tell you guys that uh, Pluto TV is doing uh, sponsoring this show, along with Quip. I'll yeah. tell you about Quip in a second. Wrangler, Castro, and uh, Geico. Uh, so what happened with uh, Detroit? Well, well like, let, me, let me ask for a second what happened with the race, and then we'll yeah. get back to that. Well, the... the race is the exciting part. We, after all the flight debacles and stuff, we were going out there to do... Uh, a live car cast show, um, and then there was a drag race as well. The, the live car cast show is fantastic. Um, it really went well. You can hear it. Uh, well, you would have heard it this week. It was on Wednesday. It was the show with Goldberg. We had a guy from Dodge uh, uh, on and Leah Pritchett, uh, top fuel mm-hmm. driver, um, and they're, they're both great. Then the drag race was uh, – it was Goldberg and I – Mm-hmm. It was Mike Finnegan and David Freiberger from Roadkill and Hot Rod, mm-hmm. right? And then it was Christy Lee from All Girls Garage and Host Barrett Jackson and and whatever and mm-hmm. uh, and Richard Rawlings mm-hmm. and Leah Pritchett. She was oh and Matt Hagen. So Leah Pritchett is the top fuel uh-huh. driver for Dodge, and Matt Hagen's the funny car driver for Dodge. So those guys you would and, think would have an advantage, but sometimes. Not so much. Some, right. It's weird. Sometimes guys are used to just different equipment or something else. But yeah. in this particular case, 
Well, they've been there all day. They were dragging. Oh. They were doing burnouts with their cars yeah. and doing a whole thing. That's and they're kinda, super competitive. It's their job. Like I get it. That's kind of all of it. Yeah. Is just having that seat time. Uh, uh, Chris Jacobs was there. He was at the. He was on the track with us, sort of uh, doing the broadcast. Mm-hmm. And then, um, uh, what's his name? Steve Mignante mm-hmm. was in the booth. Yes. And uh, uh, by the way, butchered my name, and he's like. Just just ruined it for me. He's just like, doesn't know my name. He's like, doesn't know why I was there. I was like, there's got to be notes in front of you. It says, you know, Matt and Goldberg are here for a car cast. And, and he's like, nah, I don't know. What's next? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like there's a fair, a fair bit of that for guys that talk for a living. They don't know what, uh, how to pronounce the guy's name or what we're talking about or whatever it is, which is... Uh, Weird, although I think I just did it with that female rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Duplo? <laughs> to be fair to me, she's not a guest on the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, Steve has been on Shift and Steer as a guest once. Oh. All right. <laughs> so uh, I right, so, imagine that uh, you were telling me before that you're having trouble hooking up the rear end. Yeah. Even so, with launch control. Right. We were all racing Dodge Challenger Hellcat wide bodies with automatic transmissions. They're looking for some parity. Would you, okay, you want parity, I would just say no launch control for anybody. They kind of left it up to everybody, and I don't think anybody used launch control. I don't get the launch control that doesn't work. It, it seems like it's one yeah. big computer program, and you just type it in. Yeah, I, I would have liked to have tried. So we didn't get any practice sessions or anything. We just got in the cars and we went. Sure. It was a little it was a little hectic and Yeah, and, you guys you guys will will find with almost all things people push you along. So, they just kind of like celebrity you're doing race, this, you're celebrity doing this, that. Yeah. Or it's just a kind of a thing where it's like before you know it, you're just sitting in the car and you're like I don't even And the guys calling you forward and you right, got to do the right. burnout and it, I don't even know where my settings are on the car. I'm I'm right, still adjusting right. my seat. Right, right, right. There's a lot of that. Now, yeah. not with the Toyota Grand Prix. That that you get a lot of seat time. Yeah. But everything else, yeah, it's just like, yeah. So go ahead, sorry. So they um they they took these poker chips with numbers and colors and they threw them all into a bag and everybody randomly picks mm-hmm. and um I forgot what the whole lineup was but uh, round one was me versus Christy Lee mm-hmm. and uh, and she's fun she's great we, she's a correspondent yeah yeah right and Not the drag uh, race. and uh, right. right so um we went I think Goldberg went up against. Uh, uh, like Matt Hagen or somebody, one of the drag racers. Or, you know, it's funny. It's one of these things where it's like, look, no car guy guy wants to get beat by a girl at anything. But in the drag racing department, everything is just the same, male and female. It's not like, well, you got the upper body strength or whatever. Yeah. And then you can usually deduct 50, or in Goldberg's case, 100, 100 pounds for yes, how much except, he weighs. Except Matt Hagen's a bodybuilder. <laughs> the, the Dodge guy is huge. Oh, okay. The, the well, funny no, car I'm saying, guy. Yeah. No, I'm saying if he's <laughs> Goldberg's going up against the blonde yeah. chick, yeah. then not only does he not necessarily have a hand eye coordination or whatever it, advantage, he also is a hundred pounds it's just a hundred pounds more in the car. Yeah. yeah. Oh know? yeah, we talked about that too. So they brought us all into the drag strip and on you know, and they, they Chris Jacobs walked around with the camera guy and everybody had to like shit talk everybody right. and it was fun. Mm-hmm. Um so uh I go up against Christy Lee and my strategy was this. My strategy was leave everything in normal street mode because mm-hmm. everything gets to be too aggressive in track mode. Right. Mm-hmm. So leave it all in street mode. I want soft sh- suspension so I can shift some weight. Right. To, to, to the back. I don't know in those cars if track mode. It's a Hellcat wide body. So track mode to me means stiff suspension for road racing. Right. So I wanted street. Same size front and rear tires. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I put it in manual. It's automatic. But Three, I, 315? 305s? Oh, 305s. It's funny. I could see the three and the yeah. five, but I wasn't <laughs> yeah, sure no, what you're, was you're right. in between it. Because Goldberg runs 315s on his, like on the back of his personal car. Because uh-huh. you can fit. It, right. right, but it comes with 305s. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's in automatic, but then you click it to manual mode and use the paddle shifters. Mm-hmm. And I, I got up to the line. I did a very short burnout. Everybody was putting on a big burnout show, but we were on street tires. Right. And I was thinking, just get the water off. Right. You know, you drive through the little water box. I just lit them up to get the water off, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, street tires don't get better with heat. Yeah. They get worse with heat. 
they get worse so, with heat. So it was explained to me when I did some road racing yes. stuff. Uh, so, and then I roll up, and in manual mode, I put it in second instead of first. Mm. So I'm launching in second gear now. Mm-hmm. It'll and, let you do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my strategy was roll into the throttle through second gear, short shift into third, about five grand. Uh huh. Roll into third gear, mm-hmm. and and then and then go flat out, just flat out in third, right? Because it's, 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 it's lighting up the tires. I, I think yeah. what people don't really realize when they've watched too many movies, when you're doing a drag race and you're trying to beat someone next to you or do put a time in, everyone gets so fired up at the start. They're looking at the Christmas tree. They're throwing revs. They dump the clutch. And then they just sit there. Yeah. Like with wheel spin. <laughs> and you're just, while the clock is ticking, you're just like literally spinning your wheels. And it takes such a crazy discipline to go, I'm not going to stomp on it. Yeah. I'm not going to dump the clutch. I'm not going to, whatever, you didn't have a clutch to dump. Yeah. But what I'm saying yeah. is like, I'm not going to do all this stuff I want to do because it's going to hurt me. Yeah. And and you're right. You get thrown into the car so quickly that you do get a little excited, and it's tough to focus. You're trying to look down the strip, and you're looking at your gauges, and you forget to to do the other one. You know, right? Um, anyway, we launched. So you're going to start in second. I started in second. And That's I, a ballsy move. Yeah, I guess unless you sort of researched it. A well, little. so I talked to some of the other guys, like, like uh, Mike Finnegan, who's the roadkill guy. That was his strategy as well. He raced these cars last year. Oh, I see. And, uh, and I said, okay, let's try second. Again, this was this is a 10-second conversation, and then you're in the car. Like, everything was very, very quick. Well, you know, <laughs> if you can read my T-shirt, second place is first loser. Yeah, that's right. So I don't know about second, dude. <laughs> but whatever. All right. Um, let's tease it. Yeah. Let's tease it. All right. So we're getting lined up. We're ready to go. And let me tell you about Pluto TV. They're lined up. They're ready to go. Leading free streaming television service watch. Over 100 TV channels. Thousands of movies on demand. Completely free. Pluto TV. Never ask for a credit card. They don't even need to. uh, You don't need to sign up to watch. You just watch it for free. Pluto TV is the easy and completely legal way to watch your favorite TV shows and hit movies and do it for free. Just load it right onto your phone or what have you. Never pay for TV again by downloading Pluto TV. What are you waiting for? Download Pluto TV for free on all your favorite devices. You do it today. It includes uh, your phone, Roku, Amazon Fire uh, TV, I should say. Um, Apple TV, smart TVs, PlayStation, anywhere. Yep. You stream anywhere you stream with Pluto TV. That's Pluto TV. All right, I think uh, I'm excited. So you're you're starting in second. Yeah, so I'm starting in second. Um, so you literally just sit there and you click click on the paddle. Yeah, just click once. From, you know, I rolled up in first. Click it into second, and then they didn't use the Christmas tree. They used the guy because he, right. you know, he points at you right, and makes right. sure you're paying attention. Right, right. And uh, then his arms, you know, right. up and arms are down. Very fast and furious. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and is your foot on the brake? Yeah. So, I mean, I left foot brake and put my foot on the right. gas just for a little bit more reaction time. Right. But as soon as the arms dropped, I just tapped the gas a little bit to get the car moving. Right. And. Uh, and still, that was enough to get the jump on Christy Lee. So off mm-hmm. the line, out of the whole shot, I I, I got that. And then I was in the lead. Uh, I was in the lead against Christy. It was a pretty good start. I'm sure it looked slow as hell on TV, but it felt fast in the car. Yeah. Um, and, and it always looks slow on TV because they're moving the camera along yeah. with you. And, 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 it's you, just, know, so and kinda... you know, 10 minutes ago, you were watching... Leo Pritchett's funny car do a right. thousand foot burnout with, right. at 150 miles an hour. Right. You know, so everything looks super slow on, on TV. So uh, I got the whole shot. Um, that was good. And then I was about a car ahead because I didn't see her to my left. My peripheral mm-hmm. vision, I couldn't see her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started putting the, the gas down in second. I was thinking to short shift in third, but what I did is I looked for her, and by the time I looked back, I was at seven grand. So I hit the paddle, clicked into third, and even at third gear, the car spun the tires and got loose. Did you stomp on it? 
when it was in third? No, I was, third? I was, I uh, was, I was pretty much down on the on the throttle. When I clicked in the third, right. it broke loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I backed off the throttle a little bit, mm-hmm. and then I saw Christy come up into my window, mm-hmm. and then I hammered back down in third. And that was enough to hold her off and beat her by, like, half a car. It was a good competitive race. Uh, you finished in third gear? Uh, I think fourth gear. Get to fourth. Um, is it six? I, I think it is. I'm, maybe more with the automatic. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. With the paddle? Yeah. You think six or seven? Yeah, probably. Uh, Max yeah. Paddle figure that yeah. out. Yeah. All right. So you um, win the first heat. So I win the first round. What kind of time did you lay down? You know, it's, they didn't give us times or speeds. And I'm sure they did that because the numbers are all embarrassing because everyone's spinning tires and oh, pedaling. Right, right, like, right. I'm sure we're all running like 13 twos. But you still like to know what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now. Um, and maybe after the fact, we'll get some of those numbers. So uh, other people are running, but the exciting ones were Goldberg goes up. Um, I forgot who he raced. I think Matt Hagen is who he raced. and um, Sounds exciting. And Goldberg won his first round. He mm-hmm. beat professional drag racer Matt Hagen. Yeah, in a weird way, the guys who are the kind of weekend warrior hobbyist guys, I don't know, maybe they have a little advantage over the yeah. guys who drive the big equipment everywhere. It, it kind of happens a lot. Like, it's, it's always, you know the thing that's mind-numbing? Uh, it's mind-numbing where when you play like a celebrity softball game and I get up there and I hit a frozen rope to, you know, right field that bounces off the fence and get like a stand up double. And then like perennial all-star Bobby Gritch gets up there and then just pops out to the yeah. pitcher and you're like, dude, yeah. come on. Really? <laughs> and it's like, like yeah, that's kind of how it is. Like sometimes it just works that way. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean I'd be a better <clears throat> ball player than Bobby Gritch. It just means yeah. he just fouled one to the pitcher. I, I get it. Like, driving that funny car, for example, is not the same as driving that Hellcat. It's an eight-speed automatic, and it has eight speeds in the, in yeah, the paddle? Yeah, on the paddle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can see where Matt Hagen's at. He's he's like, he probably never driven the car. He's driven it once, hasn't drag raced it, and it's not the same as his funny car, right? It's, <laughs> you know, everything in there is different. Right. You know, um, so Goldberg wins that first round, which is great, and then we have... Leah Pritchett, who's amazing, top fuel driver, up against Richard Rawlings. Uh oh! Woo! <laughs> That's <laughs> and, a sign. And and he's he was he was talking his shit and having fun and doing everything you know all all for the mm-hmm. fans and everybody loved it. And uh, he does a big burnout. Leah does a big burnout. It's great show is going on. And then the guy has his hands. He's pointing at the driver, pointing at the driver, and then he raises his hands. Oh, I was gonna. I was, uh, the thing that's funny is when you were telling me yeah. about this and the yeah. guy pointing, I didn't say it. I just thought, oh, Richard Rawlings, like false started or DQ'd or no, something. So I just he starts a thought. burnout, and he's thinking in his head, "This is going to be great. I'm just going to burn out for like a thousand feet down the thing, right?" Mm-hmm. So he shows off. Richard does. Richard shows off big. Hey, uh, Max Pat, uh, when he, uh, I want to, I'm curious. I, I'm, I'm with Matt. I don't think those tires hook up better when you're whatever, but I do know it's the street, it's the road course tire. I, I do know that if you're trying to get the front end to lift off the ground and you're putting the skinny tire package on the front, you would do yeah. a burnout probably. Yeah. Well, anyway, sorry. So well, he's going to uh, do that. Actually, if you Google Roadkill 2018. Richard Rawlings versus Leah Pritchett. There's a YouTube video. If you find that, I'm going to tell you real quick about uh, Wrangler. Oh, yeah. Everyone has a favorite pair of jeans that fit perfect and always look great. And no one knows this better than Wrangler. Wrangler jeans made for the modern-day adventurers. Whether you ride a bike, a bronc, or a skateboard, these jeans are for you. Classic or modern styles, a range of fits and a price that works for you, plus vintage re-releases. If you... Visit Wrangler.com and check out their great selection of jeans, shirts, pants, and outerwear for men and women. I got a pair of these myself. I got stretchy ones so I can bend, move, drive. Yeah. Yeah. I got Drop the good that ones. clutch. Yeah. Wrangler, denim made for the modern world. Uh, all right. So he'll blow up the video. And- Hold on. I just want to give a little more love to uh, Wrangler. Yeah. Uh, I have a pair of these things, too, and uh, they are fantastic. You guys should go out and uh, check out all the new stuff. You have stuff your dress Wrangler versions. Has. Yeah, they got the dress stuff. they got the more right. casual stuff. they got the stretchy stuff. So uh, that's your avail go, yourself That's your go-to, that. like, event night thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you wear your jeans and your, and your nice 
your sweater or your maroon long sleeve shirt. Uh, yeah, which I've almost <laughs> had to retire because of my wife. Uh, All right, should we look at the, uh, the tape? Yeah, so let's look at the tape before I tell you what happens, and then I'll tell you. So, so he was going to do a burnout yeah, that so, went all the way down. Yeah, here's the, the aerial view. And look on the here's right. the aerial here's view. Is. Mr. Rawlings, the rear tires are smoking. Let off. Let uh, off. Uh, uh, uh. Clunk. All right, well. There's it's another it's angle of this. What, where's the front Eagle? angle well, of this? So he, he was burning it out all the way down. Yeah, so you see the guy in the red shirt. He's starting them. Right. And... Rawlings is already doing a burnout, and right. he's just smoking him. And now Leah Pritchett's kicking his ass. Yeah, he's just... She's 10 cars ahead. Right. He hits the wall, right? He's showing off. He hits the wall, and he rides up the wall. He's right. halfway up the wall. Mm-hmm. He's got to be shitting himself at this point. Right. right. And, uh, uh, you know, the crowd's going nuts. They see what happens, and then he... He rolls his car in. The front corner is messed up. There's a chunk out of the tire, mm-hmm. like the size of a silver dollar. Like, mm-hmm. a, and it's it's got to be a quarter inch deep. Like, mm-hmm. it's just out of the side of the tire, and the rear wheel's messed up. And uh, so he's out. Right. <laughs> right. So he's right, out. So he's out. He's out. Um, round two, we pull coins out of the hat. It's me versus Goldberg. Ooh. ooh. Right? I'm like, it's all right. We both did good. I got Mm -hmm. the weight advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Same strategy. Yeah, then to be fair, the weight advantage is nice, but if you're not really hooking up with the rear end, it's, yeah. it's a little null and void. Whereas if it's a road track, you're braking, you're cornering, you're accelerating. Yeah. My strategy again launch in second, pedal it, short shift into third, about five grand. And. Then hammer down. Right. Goldberg's strategy was leave it in drive, leave it in stock mode, and just do it. Right. Just go. Okay. Uh, we we get up there. We launch. I jump him off the line. I'm driving. I was like, I'm going to beat Goldberg. This is going to be great. I I shift into third, and on the back of the, the, the steering wheel, there's these two, like, round little buttons Mm-mm. And those are like radio buttons, like you up and down for the radio, okay? And then the paddle shifter. But the paddle shifter moves an eighth of an inch. It's a very, very small click, mm-hmm. okay? So I grab the wheel. I'm ready to shift in a third. My finger hits that little radio button, and I push it, and, I, and I'm like, oh, I didn't click the shifter. So I click the shifter, and what happened was when I pushed the little button, my fingers hit the shifter, and then when I shifted again, I was in fourth. So mm-hmm. I went third, fourth, quick. Right. So right when I did that, Goldberg caught up to me. Mm-hmm. I actually downshifted back to third to really? see if I could yeah. catch him, and he was pulling away, and then I had to get back into fourth because I was at RPM. So Goldberg beat me mm-hmm. on that. Yeah, Fair and square, don't, I fucked up the shift, yeah, yeah. but people, it's, it's People fun. don't realize how much like I've done, like I did like a celebrity ski do race or something once and it was like the same thing like they they said to like i never had a ski do but i was like i was fast on shit i was still fast yeah. and it's like they had the trim they had like the trim setting on the left and like you yeah, could yeah. trim it out and put it down and trim it back for the corner and then when you got out of the corner trim it back but also the kill switch was like right there yeah <laughs> too and it's like you're vibrating and you're whatever you don't know anything yeah. and so you come out of the corner it's like trim it down for the corner like, get around the corner now trim it out we're going to the straight like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah 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 it was it's, exactly that uh, right yeah I, I mean not not as bad as like, what I did but I mean it's like there're buttons all over the place and it's not your buttons and that the that, shit that's happened. right. And, and I, in my head, I knew what I did once it happened. Like I said, I tried to downshift back to third and give it a little more of a run. But it, he he straight up beat me. And uh, right now, l- now let me say this: all uh, all you folks out there competing and whatever. Whereas uh, Matt, the moderator, or as I like to call him, Good Matt, <laughs> over here versus the Porcelain Punisher, was Matt the moderator had a plan. And that's a good plan, yeah. and it's a plan that's more of a strategy than Goldberg's, and it could result in you beating Goldberg, but it also leaves the window open for human error. Yeah. Because Goldberg's does. plan was put it in drive and just go straight. With all the things you're trying to do, look at the tack and the guy right, next right, to you in the right. car in front of you, his strategy was to focus on 
just go straight. Yeah, and, and, eliminate and, one of the yes, things, one of the variables. You've yeah. opened yourself up to that, and yeah. sure enough, in the heat of battle, you grab the wrong thing. I, I mean, again, I <clears throat> we had no practice or warm up, so I ran twice, and those are the only two times I was in the car. Maybe right. with a few more laps, I would like to have tried. When you put the shifter in manual, you can bump it in gears without using the paddle shifter. You can use the uh-huh. the center console shifter. Right. Well, and, it's and not it's less not room like, for a mistake, but now like, you're driving with one hand. It's not like one thing's better than the other. It's just like you need to get used to doing it Yeah, with some muscle memory. All right, so now Goldberg. So, so Goldberg wins, um, and then the other guys, uh, uh, Mike Finnegan, the roadkill guy, um, uh, he wins his round. And the mm-hmm. final round is roadkill versus car cast. Mm. Goldberg versus Finnegan. Mm. And and we're getting excited about this. Goldberg and I are chatting in the car a little bit. We're getting ready. And uh, uh, they're getting ready to line up. Um, and I'm going to tell you what happens right after Castro Edge. <laughs> oh, boy, uh, heat, friction, and viscosity break down, and they rob your engine of maximum performance. Friction results in loss of performance of up to 10%. Man, you don't want that. No. Especially that drag race. Castrol Edge is engineered with fluid titanium technology. It physically transforms to be stronger under pressure. It helps fight friction and delivers maximum levels of performance for your car. It's three times stronger against viscosity breakdown than leading oils. Castrol Edge, unlock the true performance of your car's engine. You know, Castrol is like the default oil and fluids in the BMW M3. And I'm going to go through and do all the fluid swaps oh, good. in the M3. I'm going to do the engine, transmission, differential. It's not about the miles that's on that car. It's about age, you know, as well, right? You know, right. the car's old. I don't think any of that's been... Uh, it's, the oil's been changed, but the rest hasn't been done. And I run that oil through the supercharger, so I'm going to run all that through there. But anyway. uh, You run the engine oil through the supercharger. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now Goldberg. So Goldberg uh, is up against Mike Finnegan. We love this. You know, it's a roadkill event. We love this roadkill versus car cast. Uh, uh, a, a battle that's going on. Goldberg's strategy is... Don't mess with success. It's right. like, I'm going to put it in drive and, uh, and hammer down and go. Finnegan's strategy was similar to mine. He wanted a second gear launch, short shift to third. I'm not, uh, you know, my assumption is that somebody around there with their iPhone is throwing a clock on some of this stuff. Yeah, I'm and, sure there and are that times. we could get some feed. No, I don't want to know him now. Goldberg should have know, known it then. Oh, yeah. No, we were asking everybody. Right. Yeah. And nobody was giving us information. Uh, okay. Yeah, we were asking everybody. I think there'd be like some fan that'd go like, I did Goldberg's and I did Finnegan's. Yeah. And uh, here's what uh, <laughs> That's here's I was what hoping, happened. too. Right. So now that you're hearing this, let us know. Uh, Goldberg <laughs> well, now I don't up. care, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I will care later. I'm in terms do- of employing a strategy, yeah. that information would be helpful. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh these guys launch. I don't think there's a video for it yet. We'll, we'll find out. Maybe there is. I don't know. Um, Goldberg versus Finnegan. Uh, they, they launch. And to my recollect, recollection where I was standing, Goldberg got the jump on Finnegan mm-hmm. and managed to hold them the whole time. Goldberg takes the win, wins the whole event. And we bring the virtual trophy back to CarCast. So nice. we're, we're going to put the Roadkill guys on notice. Psych. We're down for the rematch. David Freiberger and Mike Finnegan against Goldberg and I. Any drag race, any time, mm. we'll do it. Wow. As long as it's someone else's car. As long as it's someone else's, <laughs> as long as it's Dodge's cars. And uh, Richard Walling Rawlings is welcome to come out and drop the hand and start start the race for us. But he can't get <laughs> But he car. can't get in a car. The... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so it sounds like just putting it in drive is probably the best strategy I, for I'm, that. I'm leaning toward that. With that experience. But I got the jump on Goldberg and Christy Lee with my strategy, and I felt like if I would have been able to pull it off, well, I, I, I could have won. I guess with, uh, the, the moral of the story is if it's early and you're a little hungover and you're not driven the car, just put it in drive and yeah. see if you can win. If you have some time and some experience behind the wheel and you get to shake it out, yeah. get some test runs in and put a clock on it, blah, 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 then 
yeah. do that strategy. Look, I, people were saying, oh, it, Goldberg had the unfair advantage because he owns a dozen of these goddamn cars and drives them every day. It's like, yeah, but Finnegan's like a drag racer, and he's been down the strip a million times, and he did this event in these same cars last year. Maybe not uh, wide bodies. Yeah, you know? no, that's... So it was good. That's it was a, good, that's fair That's an run. advantage. It doing was a fair it, run. Yeah, doing it the year before yeah. is definitely the kind of thing. Think, <laughs> think how much, not that you'll ever be invited back, but think how much you would know potentially... <laughs> I didn't wreck a car. ...if you ever <laughs> were invited back. Yeah. I know. Well, that's that's what'll make it extra sad when Richard <laughs> Rawlings shows up yeah. next year and yeah. they, they go past you. All right, you got your uh travel woes i still yeah. didn't get to those but i want to yeah. get to uh quip most of us brush our teeth wrong that's because most brands focus on selling flashy gimmicks rather than better brush and quip i have it right in front of me i've just been i love uh, this idea i love this I love idea too teeth cleaning devices on our show i love that uh, we're <laughs> I love that That's we're living toothbrush. in that world it's now. It's not anything yeah. else. It's just a toothbrush. That's right. <laughs> it's Quip electric toothbrush. It's a uh, fraction the cost of the uh, bulkier brushes. It's very small, very sleek, very handy. It uh, has a built-in timer with guiding pulses that remind you when to switch sides. I love that. Quip also has a subscription plan, delivering new brush heads every three months for about five bucks, including uh, free shipping worldwide. Quip starts... At just twenty five bucks, yeah, I got the whole kit in front of me. It's got the toothpaste, got the got the brush, the head, everything else. It's really sleek, really nice, and uh, it starts. Quip starts just about twenty five bucks. So if you go to getquip dot com slash carcast right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free. That's g e t q u i p dot com slash carcast. Get that uh, refill pack for free. Your first one. It's a great design. It's smart, smarter than we are quit yeah all right uh travel woes travel woes we were flying out to we have to go to detroit and uh we we try to be nice and like let's time this uh goldberg's coming from atlanta he's filming his tv show forged in fire knife or death oh season right. two right. I love season that. one they did six episodes season two they're doing like 16 episodes people love Watching Jello being cut in slow motion. Oh, <laughs> what I love about it is, it's like the producer that's there, like putting this together, or the director or something does American Ninja Warrior. But all those guys are athletes, and people who make knives are not athletes. <laughs> yeah. So when they when they have to run through this obstacle course and like chop watermelon with a samurai sword, then they got to take a breath because they're winded. <laughs> it's yeah, they're fantastic. Built like that. I'm telling you, it's a funny. Fantastic show. It's a great thing. So uh, Goldberg's flying from Atlanta to, to, to Detroit. For some reason, we check every airline. We can't find a, a direct flight there to Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the guys who booked it have us going to Atlanta literally pick up Goldberg on the same flight and mm-hmm. then go to Detroit, mm-hmm. which means Chris and I catch a one fifteen a.m. flight Mm. Uh, one fifteen Saturday morning because we needed to be there at about noon. Serious red eye. Serious red eye. Detroit to Atlanta's got to be a pretty short flight, right? Yeah, it's like two hours. Yeah, is it two hours? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised it's even that long. Okay, we get there. It's one ten. By the way, uh, th- the red eyes. This is why the red eyes suck. Is the lines are short, but uh, you know. TSA is closed. Everything's closed. You can't get a beer. Mm-hmm. You can't get a cocktail. You can't get anything. Yeah, everything's closed. Everything's closed. And we, like, we try to bribe the the the, the people there that are closing the restaurant, cleaning the like, floors. <laughs> We're like, we just want two beers. You don't have to cook anything. Sorry, yeah. register's closed. We yeah. have cash. Yeah, and and Adam, we had first class tickets. So uh, Matt uh, Matt was like, let's go to the lounge. Let's go to the lounge. Yeah. We, we go right. to the lounge. It's You're not an international part, right? flight, but they showed a piece of paper that says, well, do you have one of these cards? And it was the American <laughs> Express. Every black time card. you and I have flown Maybe. and we walk in, you're like, can I get in the lounge? Do you have... You're like, oh, well, I have the American Express card. They're like, the rules change. We don't take that anymore. Finally, we go to the lounge with first class tickets. They they're, like, they're like, you got the American Express card? I'm well. like, no, I thought you didn't change that. She had like a poster. The other, the other <laughs> like problem is, is you get a first class <laughs> ticket, and when you fly the red eye, 
you get going and they're like, here's your blanket. We're shutting the lights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, that's the other thing. Too. Whoa, I, I got a first class <laughs> ticket. Like, let's get some drinks up in here. Yeah. Like, oh, we're just we're, we're coming, we're turning the lights down. Everyone go to bed. Like, it's the greatest. Yeah. It's the sweetest gig ever if you're yeah. the, the person that has to wait on everybody because you just go sit down and read a People magazine while everyone sleeps because by the time we get to cruising altitude, it's yeah. 2 a.m., right? I, I'm telling you, like, we get on the plane, you ask the guy for a beer, and he's like, really? It's one in the morning. Right, he's that guy. Right. And you're like, champagne? Pain? Come on now. Mimosa? Right. Okay. We'll right. do that. Like, like we're getting like, you're right. And then, <laughs> so, uh, flight's at 1.15. 1 o'clock rolls on. Guy gets on the PA. Uh, pilot didn't show up. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get you on the next flight. 9.05 a.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is... I was like, you're telling me there's not another pilot in L.A., Anywhere in the country, half halfway around the world, there's not a pilot that can't get here in less than eight hours. Wow! So off the plane, we didn't even, we didn't get on the plane. They oh, didn't even board us. So everyone's standing around going, "Shouldn't we board? Shouldn't we board?" There's 150, right. 170 people there, right? Wow! And the guy's like, "A pilot didn't show up." So <laughs> come back at nine or eight or seven yeah, thirty. Like come but back, that, and but that's not an option for us because we had a live podcast in Detroit at four, and we'd be landing in Atlanta at four twenty. Yeah. Right, like we couldn't do it. There's right. no way. Right, we were supposed to get there at noon and do some press right. interviews right. and stuff. Right. You know, right. the whole thing. And uh, and now I'm on the phone with with Delta. I'm calling every airline, and the guy's like, "I can get you." Oh, he goes, "Oh, I got it. You're on a seven a.m. flight instead of nine. You'll get there at 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 two thirty, and you'll you'll make your four o'clock thing. By the way, it's an hour drive from the airport to the event. Right, right. right. I was like, okay, let's do it. And then he's like, God, I'm having a hard time getting you on this flight. It it keeps putting you on a ten thirty flight. I was like, yes, because your seven your your seven a.m. flight is already fucking bumped to ten thirty. Right. right. And he goes, oh, I guess that's why. And I was like, you need to find another airline. Let's find something. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, there's nothing direct and whatever, whatever. You're and talking to your guy at this point? I'm talking, no, I'm talking to Delta. Right. Okay. I'm talking to Delta. And, but you can't walk up to the ticket counter and have this argument because all the ticket counters are closed. Right. 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 We had left, you know, the, uh, the, the, um, we had left the terminal. You have to go back out. Right. Right. The ticket counters are closed. I'm arguing on the phone with the guy. I was like, and and my meanwhile, we're like Googling as well, looking sure. for every flight sure. we can. Sure. And then the guy's like, I don't see anything. We're like, yeah, there's a United flight. Get us on the United flight. It connects through Denver and then goes to Detroit. Mm-hmm. And at this point, this is the only option. It's the flight is at 515. There's a, a little delay in Denver, but then we can get there by three. Right. Uh, we've missed our car at this point. You know, we'll right, miss right, our car. Right. We'll Uber right. an hour. We'll we'll sure. get there at four. Right. And the guy's like, "Okay, I can do it. Delta will pay for it." It's like, "Okay," and he goes, "Just understand that uh, we can't put you on the first class seats." I'm like, "It's fine. We just need to get there." And he goes, "But also, if you accept a lesser seat, you don't get the refund for that portion." And I was like. I, I didn't pay for it. Dodge paid for it, and and thank you, for Dodge, for that. But I was a little bit like, no, that's some bullshit. Your your pilot didn't show up. Yeah, you need no, to I'm, refund that card. This is this is <laughs> sort of like when you know the gas company goes or the cable company or whatever they go. We're going to be at the house between eight a.m. and five p.m. on Thursday, and then they never show up. And then you go, hey, your guy never showed up. We got to reschedule. And they go, okay. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on on Friday. Yeah. And you go, no, because no. your window of windows just ran out. Yeah. I gave you the first fucking window. You don't get to just go back to business as usual. Yeah. Like, hey, we screwed you royally. Now it's back to our policy. Yeah. Like, the policy is fine, but when you screw somebody over, now it's tweaking time. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, add to that something like the cable company going, oh, and also there's a $35 change fee. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? What's going on? We didn't, your guy didn't show up. Where was he? Was that lunch? Uh, I talked to one guy on the phone. He said the pilot had like exceeded his hours or something yeah, like yeah. that. I was like, okay, I get that. But that sounds like a huge scheduling problem on your part. You're telling me on a 1.15 a.m. flight at one o'clock, you all found out that the pilot, like maybe his plane was delayed. He was circling in the air for a couple of hours and then he exceeded his hours. Isn't that about the time when you start getting another pilot on the pl- on the yeah. on the phone. Well, of course. But <laughs> so 
Now you guys are going to be at the airport from... So it's not worth going home. That's is it? right. So it's not worth going home, but you can't get back into the terminal because that's all closed. So that guy can come out with the buffing wheel and yeah. buff for a couple hours. So we're basically sleeping at the ticketing area on on your on terrazzo floors, freshly buffed terrazzo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I think he, he slept on like a stainless steel counter. <laughs> Max Spatter. Yeah. yeah. Where, where you like measure the uh, weight of where your Where you like weigh, weigh, weigh your suitcase. Right. So sad. I mean, that's such a bummer. I mean, it's like. And then you can't sleep because the guy's yeah. there with the fucking buffing machine. Right. right. And you're like, what am I? It's just. It's, what did everyone else on the flight do? I don't. I. I most they of them. strewn about? Uh, most of them were stayed in the terminal and waited eight hours for the flight. And then I guess some people left and tried to get a hotel room because. When it's usually the airline's flight, they'll say, we'll get you a hotel room. Fault. But, yeah. you right. know. Um, um, so you get, you're able to catch the 515. We did. Out of there with no first class. No, we actually bought our own tickets. That was the other thing is Delta said, we can't get you in first class. And we're like, yeah, but I'm looking at the United right now and first class is available. And he's like, yeah, well, our policy is we swap even for even. He goes, but, uh, but this isn't even for even. I was like, first class to first class? He's like, yeah, but financially it doesn't make sense. I guess their ticket was more or something. And I, Again, well, like once you <laughs> screw up, you have to eat it. That's, yeah. that's, right? that's kind of the thing. And that's the problem with – I was literally talking to Rob at the other shop about this, which is – when people have your money already, it's a completely different set of rules versus wanting to get your money. When they have your money, now it's like, you better prove it to me why I should give it back to oh, you. Yeah. And it's no longer just, uh, you know, 12 angry men making a decision. It's like, I need, you better make a real good case for me to give you your money back. And even then, I might just go, no. Yeah. That was my, that was my whole thing with uh, American I think it was American when it's like they put me in the economy plus seat with the three inches of knee room. And then Mike August just sat behind me in a regular seat. Yeah. And, and I got back. I was like to Matt. I was like, huh, I feel like we should have just got a nice seat for Mike, you know, for an extra 60 bucks or whatever. And he's like, we bought that seat. And I was like, OK. And then when I talked to American, I was like, yeah, I need my money refunded because I got the ticket. I paid the extra 16. He put them in another seat. And they're like, would you like some Fiesta mix? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. I just want the money. The money. The money. And they're like, yeah, we don't. We'll review that. <laughs> and like, like, what sort of review? And then like, yeah, we did some reviewing and now. <laughs> and I'm like, why? What could be more straightforward than Yo. you basically said, you want an in and out burger or you want a double double? And you went, I'll take the double double. And then you pay for the double double. And then they give you an in and out single patty burger. And you go, Well, that's fine, but just give me the difference. Yeah. And they're like, Yeah, we've reviewed that and we're unable to do that. Would you like some pickles right. or a some packet free of ketchup? ketchup? <laughs> and it's like, uh, This seems <laughs> really straightforward to me. And so, and they were like issuing letters to Matt going, we understand how frustrating this must be for you. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not really that frustrating because it's 50 bucks or 60 bucks. And yeah. Mike August was sitting out there. It's just more of a personal thing, which is just yeah. return the money. We can offer you a voucher on a local flight. like, Or you just give the money just back. Just get 60 and we'll, bucks. We'll move forward. And I don't want a voucher. And I don't want it to go toward my next flight. I just want to just return the money. Yeah. It's okay. That's fair. I'm not asking it, for extra money. Yeah, I'm telling you, they, when the guy told me, he's like, our policy is if you accept the lesser seat, we don't refund you the difference. I was like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> no, like, like you have to have a – look, it's an apples to apples policy. Yeah. If, if it's first class, then we'll give you first class somewhere else. Now. Yeah. Uh, if it's first class on uh, Korean Air to – you know, and it's – Thirteen thousand dollars or something, and it's whatever. We'll go, thir- you know, first class plus twenty five percent more, and then we'll stop or some policy like that because we screwed up. Yeah. We don't want to pay ten grand or whatever that stupid thing is. Anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, just, it's just weird too because, like, uh, one, we're missing work. We're going to miss work, and two, it's it's their fault. It's not ours. If it was, if we were late to the flight and we missed the gate, and then they, you know, booked us on another flight, then sure we could eat the cost. But it's their fault that they didn't have a pilot. That we have to miss work, 
and and then they don't make it even. Well, when they already have cashed your check, like when they already have your money, one of the their fault versus your fault, that's one of the many things that just flies out the <laughs> yeah, window. Yeah. Now, There's... when you're holding the money and they don't have it yet, then whose fault is this is a major <laughs> yeah. issue, right? Yeah. It's neither here nor there once they have the money. Yeah, like who polices oh, yeah. this kind of stuff then? It's, it's, it's crazy. I'm telling you, I, I had to have Matt go back to American or whatever it was like four times to keep telling him, I want my money back for the thing like, I didn't get. They could see... They could tell on their records where Mike sat, where I sat, which was Premium Plus, yeah. and which one was just regular coach. Like, it took a lot of laps. Yes, I don't know. Why not just have a, this must come up. When it does come up, here's our policy. Give them the difference back. I, I, all their policies are bullshit. And, and <laughs> they're all bullshit. I finally convinced the guy. He said, okay, we'll, we'll issue the refund for the difference. And I said, great, no problem. I just went up to the kiosk and bought us the first class upgrades, and it's fine because if Dodge is getting their refund, I know they're more than happy to just cover our receipts. So that's fine. But another example of that bullshit, by the way, it used to be like when I would fly as a kid, it was like going to Disney World. It was exciting. It was like, oh, we're going to fly on a plane, and everybody's kind of a little bit dressed up, and it's good. Never now it's like that. Now it's like worse than buying a used car. Yeah. It's well, like look, everybody look. hates it. We made a decision, and the decision was – we're not going with the Concorde and supersonic speed or state of the art anything or, you know, hot chicks with British accents bringing yeah. us hot napkins. We're just going for full economy all the time. And when you just go full, how much cheaper can we make this? Well, what if you just said, look, as far as car companies go, there's no Bentley or Rolls Royce or Ferrari. It's all the cheapest all the time, like the cheapest thing you can make with four wheels that uh, Dylan can afford. That's all we're doing. Well, what would your experience be like? Yeah. All right. Oh, do uh, do Geico. Yeah. Sorry. The, the way they screwed when I was on that Alaska flight and they and they moved me to the to the row in front of the one I paid for. I was like, well, there's nobody sitting in the row behind me. So why can't I just sit there? They're like, oh, because the the you know the, everybody's names are written down and you can't move the seat. But when you and I flew to the UK for Goodwood, and I said, my friend's downstairs. There's plenty of seats. Can we move up here? I'm like, sure. He paid twelve thousand dollars for his ticket. We will move him anywhere you want. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, so the rules are bullshit if you pay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Here's a here's an ad for Richard Rawlings. Geico insurance. Oh, you got to feel like insurance, you need some yeah. insurance. <laughs> Everybody's got a to do list. You drop off dry cleaning. You pick up some milk. Now you can add save hundreds of dollars of car insurance on that list. You don't have to drop, drop off or pick up anything. If you just go to Geico.com and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. So if you want some extra money in your pocket, this is the most rewarding to do you can do today. Go to Geico.com. Geico, baby. All right. Uh, should we take a look at uh, the uh, Nissan uh, Dino poll? We got some new plugs in the yeah. turbo car. We uh, fixed it, fixed a few, tweaked a few things, and uh, gave it a second dyno pull. You guys can give it a listen and so give round it a watch. one we talked about. We couldn't get a full, yeah. We couldn't get data. We couldn't hook stuff up, and wasn't making big power. But. Here, here we go. It seemed like he spooled it up. I got, I get he did it quick. What was the numbers on that thing? Yeah, can we zoom in on that again? Uh, you may have gotten the wrong pull there, Maxipana. That's the last one that sh- uh, Sean sent. Oh, what's the horsepower? Sorry. Oh. Uh, five fifty-six. Five fifty. Yeah, five fifty-nine. Sorry, am I looking at horsepower there? Max power. Oh, 556. Oh, torque. Sorry, I was looking at five, uh, four, 459. Sorry. 556 was the max power. That's weird. It didn't seem like he spooled it up that much on that That, that, that run. might not have been the last run because he – that that was the last run, but I think he pulled less horsepower. And then the chart shows the total horsepower with, with you know, like run number two or something. It been. Oh, I see. I see. Um, I see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so five fifty six horsepower, uh, basically four sixty torque. T- torque. Okay. Um, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, and that's to the rear wheel. So, and it's running well now. Yeah. Figure yeah. Uh, about 
I don't know, we figured out about 15%, maybe maybe 13% scrubbed off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, through the transmission and yeah, where does that put us? About six, sixty, six eighty. Everyone in my converse. Yeah, I don't know, maybe about six fifty or something. I had this conversation with Sean where it's like, you know, what <laughs> I have with everybody where I go, yeah, well, it made five sixty to the to the rear wheels, but then what it make? What do you think that means to the flywheels? About ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent, eight, you know, thirteen percent, and then Sean's like, well. The drive shaft scrubs off speed, you know, scrubs it off, and then it goes in the differential, and like that scrubs it off. And I'm like, understood. No, I, under- I, I understand. I understand. The drive I'm not asking how do I- cars work. <laughs> I, I have a conversation. This is why with, I asked for fifteen percent. Uh, right. I have conversations with. You're not talking to your wife. Like I'm going to write a book called "You're Not Talking to Your Wife." Like I have conversations with Nate and and Sean. Where I, like I'll go like, when's the poster going to be ready for Willie T? And he'll go. uh when you make a documentary, we have to you have to make a poster. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm not asking how posters work. Yeah, I'm saying, no, yeah, it's a weird thing. I I don't go lowest common denominator for everybody. <laughs> like if you said to me, like, well, we got to get some primer on the car, I wouldn't go right, and that goes before the paint, Matt. So primer then paint. Like, oh, like yeah, you sound like a retarded person <laughs> for your questions. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I know people. I feel like people do that to me a lot, and I'm not kind of. I'm not sure why. I, I, I understand everything. That's why I'm <laughs> prefacing it. They with, don't think you do understand everything. <laughs> I don't instill confidence. I understand. I don't inspire confidence. Got to look into that one day. Yeah. I'm uh, all right. I'm super competent, but I do not inspire those thoughts in other people's heads. I've now realized. All right, uh, live shows coming up, Pasadena, Seattle, Phoenix, Anaheim, Monterey, man, come on out, say hi. Saturday, the uh, 25th of August, we'll be at the Nissan booth at the track at uh, 12 p.m. We'll have all the Nissans, the big Hino Transport, yeah. and lots of cool stuff. Come by and say hi. And someone uh, wrote in asking what kind of ticket you need. Just general admission would get you in. You could just walk into the Nissan booth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And check out uh, Podcast One, Steve Austin Unleashed. It's an excellent podcast. Steve is great. So if you love Steve and you love that sort of backwoodsy kind of philosophy, you go with I like Steve, Steve Austin He's a good dude. <laughs> Unleashed. So yeah, come see us and say hi, and we'll hang out and uh, wipe down the car. Give us a hand. Go to Chassis, that is Chassis, two S's and a Y dot com for all the new movies and everything that's going on. Until next time. Adam Curl for Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wind. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.